And so today we're going to talk about holistic cardiology. And the reason I do these talks is because I want to help you, I want to help my patients and the community make more intelligent decisions about their health when, they, when they're confronted with information. And so tonight, we're going to be talking about um, mm -hmm. look at the heart holistically. In other words, let me ask you guys some questions. In fact, hold on a minute, I forgot something I want to get. Um, All right. Okay, so why would I do a talk on looking at the heart from a holistic standpoint? Why would I do that? Anybody? Well, right. a lot of things affect the heart. Such as? Uh, stress in someone's life. Okay, stress. Okay, mm -hmm. what else? Diet. Yeah, diet. Okay. All right, Harry, you get $4 worth of natural grocer's coupons for that answer. All right. Okay. Compliments of natural grocers, okay? <laughs> All right. So you, that was a good answer. Diet affects the heart, right? Yes. Let me ask you a question. Does the heart need, do the do different organs of the body need different types of nutrition? Yeah. Yes. Or do all, they all need exactly the same thing? No. No. They, they need a lot, they need things different. For example, um, uh, where will you find most of the concentrated fatty acids in the body. The brain? The brain. That's right. That's right. The brain. You find it in the brain. Adam. <laughs> I'm going to give you a couple of these. $4, okay? okay? Natural grocers. All right, there you go. You find it in the brain. Right. Most of the fatty acids in the body, the the both the saturated and unsaturated fatty acids are found in the brain because the brain... Your nervous system is made of fat, so it needs the right kind of fat. Is it possible that the heart needs new, a, a different types of nutrition also? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the number one uh, disease killer in our culture? Heart disease. Heart disease. Heart disease. That's right. I don't know. Maybe COVID. I <laughs> know. Uh, no. The heart disease is way out facing COVID right now. They want us to think it's that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they want us to think it's COVID. It's heart disease, okay? The number one killer. So if heart disease is the number one killer of people in our culture, and maybe in the world, I don't know. If it's, if it's the number one killer, and people are not eating the right diets, like Harry just said, we need the right diet. Do you think it's possible that um, we need to learn a little bit more about what our heart needs as far as nutrition? Mm -hmm. So do you think a heart that's devoid of the right nutrition can work right? Oh, wow. it, it can't. Can a brain work right devoid of the right nutrition? No. So if you, have a, if you have very, very, very low cholesterol, your brain cannot work right because most of the cholesterol in your body is in your brain, or quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, your brain needs cholesterol, your brain needs fatty acids, so your heart needs specific nutrients too. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Number one is we're going to talk about what the heart needs, and I have a nice little machine up here that we're going to use to measure what's going on in somebody's heart because how do we know? exactly what one person needs versus another. We have to have some way of measuring that. Well, we have a heart sound recorder, which I use in my office a lot, that helps us measure what people need in terms of their, their, um, their heart nutrition, okay? So, let's just look at some things. This is a, a picture of the heart, and I'm just gonna go through this pretty fast. So the blood comes in, through the vena cava to the right atrium, that's squirted into the right uh, ventricle, which is pumped into the lungs. So that it's, your, your blood is oxygenated in the lungs. It comes back into the 
uh, left atrium, and there it's pumped into the left ventricle where it goes out the aorta, so oxygenated blood is pumped out into the body because we need oxygen, okay? So, René Lenac was a French physician who invented the stethoscope, okay? Well, I didn't know that was invented in France. My, now, my wife, who's from the Philippines, she would argue it, it was probably invented in the Philippines because she thinks everything good was invented in the Philippines. <laughs> you know, so it's, it wasn't. It was invented in France. Now, stethoscopes were a lot different then than they are today. So here's an early one right here. Now, here is how they used to examine people before the stethoscope, and I'm sure some of these guys were not real happy when the stethoscope came along, okay? <laughs> but uh, uh, it came along, but now we have a heart sound recorder, which is a computer-based low-risk general wellness monitor, which uses the principles of auscultation, like a stethoscope, to acquire, display, and record and save heart sounds. Now, certain types of heart stress can be monitored by, by visualizing the rate, the rhythm, and the tone of the heart cycle, okay? As a result, the heart's reaction to certain stressors, which are chemical, nutritional, emotional, can be observed using this heart sound recorder. And we'll, we're gonna do a demonstration of that here in a little bit. The heart is probably the most sensitive organ in the body. Um, how many of you know that it reacts to emotional stress? We all do, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it reacts to food and junk food like substances, okay? It reacts to endocrine imbalances. Like, for example, you've heard of people that have thyroid imbalances, it affects their heart rate, okay? It, it responds to toxicity and it responds to pharmaceuticals. In fact, after using this machine for three years now, I don't believe that most physicians understand how the pharmaceuticals they prescribe for people affect people's hearts, and I see it all the time. Uh, it responds to nutritional supplements, and it responds to, and when I say this, it, if you give it the right nutrition, it responds very well. If you give it the wrong nutrition, it either won't respond or it'll get worse, okay? So you need the right nutrition for people. Now, nutritional deficiencies are very common with heart problems and often one of the major causes of those problems. Now, the primary deficiency is B complex. Now you think, how could that be? I mean, we get these B vi, everybody gets to go to Walmart, they go to, you know, um, a Walgreens, they get B vitamins. The problem is, is those B vitamins are fractionated chemicals, more, more, more or less. The primary deficiency in the B complex is B4, which is part of the th part of B1. However, when you, you get those fractions where you get the bottle and it lists everything, you never see B4. B4 is what the heart needs, and that's what you get in whole foods, especially organ meats like liver, um, the things that, that, that people don't eat anymore which is one of the reasons they have so many heart issues. If you give synthetic thiamine to a patient, he will respond temporarily, but soon relapse worse than ever. Heart disease is the commonest reaction to a B4 deficiency, which is a nutritional deficiency that we get. If you, by the way, have you ever seen, how many of you watch like uh, African wildlife movies or African wildlife videos? I do all the time. So when a lion takes down, a couple of lions take down a, like uh, a water buffalo or a wildebeest, what's the first thing they eat? Heart. Yeah, they go in and they eat the organs. Yeah. yeah, because they have the most nutrition. Okay, We don't do that anymore. We eat the muscle, but we leave the organs alone. That's been to our detriment. Okay. Um, what happens with the B4 deficiency, the heart becomes partially paralyzed. Um, the, the pulse can become erratic, extra beats are common, and ultimately fibrillation can develop. Now, Dr. Royal Lee uh, was a, uh, a dentist 
He, he had a, a degree in dentistry. He was all, his undergraduate degree was in electrical engineering, but his passion was for nutrition. He was the one that invented the forerunner, the heart sound recorder. And he was the one who developed the standard process products back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Now the heart sound recorder is an objective way to measure the effects of stressors on the heart and then provide help in the form of dietary and nutritional formulas. And I have this bottle of Coke picture here because I've done this heart sound recorder on people and I've given them Coke to drink and show the difference it makes in their heart, in their heart sound. We're not gonna do that tonight. Uh, we're not gonna give Jason no. my volunteer. We're not gonna have anything <laughs> weird to drink. Yeah. We're just gonna measure his heart and look at it is basically what we're gonna do. The heart sound recorder can make an accurate assessment of 13 areas of heart function. Slower rapid heart rate, loss of valve integrity, disorganization of electrical current, absent heart sounds, altered blood viscosity, lowered oxygen capacity of tissue, thyroid hormonal dysfunction, AFib, autoimmune heart disease, uh, split heart sound, extra heart sounds, adrenal sugar stress, cholesterol fat buildup. So um, it actually measures energy. It's the same technology that's used in seismometers. It measures, measures motion and energy of the heart. Sorry about that. There we go. Now, I, I want to, before we get into actually doing uh, a demonstration, I want to talk about common heart conditions and their nutritional needs. So number one is mitral valve prolapse. We see that a lot. Most often due to an enlarged heart, most common in young women, and cataplex B is the primary starting point. Varicose veins. The, here's some varicose veins here. The valves in the veins no longer work to prevent backflow. So liver and bile needs to be supported. The, the, the recommendations that I use for nutrition for varicose veins would be Betacol, Vascular Care Complex, and Colonsonia Complex would be the three things that I would give for this problem here. It's very helpful to that. Let's look at congestive heart failure. Um, anybody ever know anybody with congestive heart failure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It occurs when the heart can no longer pump enough blood to meet the demands of the body. What are the key nutrients? Hawthorne, which tonifies the heart, along coleus forte will also, it's an herb, which tonifies the heart. There's cataplex B again, and then a, a, a protomorphogen called cardiotrophin PMG, which Anytime you see a PMG after uh, a nutrient, it means that it's there to support any autoimmune condition that may be happening. These would be the key products that we would give for congestive heart failure. How about arrhythmias? Anybody in here ever hear of somebody with heart arrhythmia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. What are the key nutrients to that? Good old cataplex B again, which has B4. A, a product called vasculin, magnesium, and Hawthorne would be good for that. Now here, here's where you have an enlarged heart with the uh, congestive heart failure. How about atherosclerosis? Anybody heard that term? Yeah, okay. Okay, it's when you get a, an inflammation and a buildup around the, the lining of the artery. Uh, it's a degeneration and inflammation what are the causes of that? Now, these aren't all the causes, but trans fats in the diet. Where do you get trans fats? Fast food. Yeah, fast food. French fries, mm -hmm. okay? A lot of your fast foods. Chicken fingers, okay? Mega doses of a, a, a absorbic acid, which people call vitamin C, but it really isn't. Hypertension, smoking, infections. Those are all causes of atherosclerosis. The nutritional considerations that I would use for those would be soybean lecithin, 
It's a product that I take regularly. It does a lot of things, good for the brain, good for the liver, good for the arteries. Cyruta and beta food would be good for that. Hypertension, high blood pressure. Let's look at some of the things that cause that. Stress, atherosclerosis, mineral insufficiencies, uh, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, diabetes, smoking, alcohol, are all things that can contribute to high blood pressure. As far as nutritional support goes, I recommend magnesium, perfusia, which is a product I have, it's a sustained released L-arginine, which um, allows the body to produce more nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, which relaxes the blood vessels. Garlic forte is real good for this, coleus and organic minerals. Okay. So let's do, we're going to do a demonstration on Jason. Okay, you want to pull your chair up here, Jason? And we want to... We're going to show you how the heart sound recorder works. His information in. It's your date of birth, Jason. 21276. How much do you weigh? Uh, 220. Or how, how tall are you? Oh, 5'11. Now, I don't know Jason's blood pressure or heart rate, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So let's. Um, why don't you come up, can you pull your chair over sure. here? Sure. We're not in front of the TV. Okay. Okay. Good. So let's look at... So we're going to strap this around, and this is, this is actually less invasive than a thermometer, or than, than at least the thermometers you put in your mouth. Here, under here. Okay, so the first valve we're going to measure on Jason is his mitral valve. Okay, so okay, there's I need to for some reason this is not. Two twelve seventy six. Yep. Okay. Now I want you to just relax. Just lean back. I just want you to relax, okay? He goes, I am relaxed. <laughs> Let's look at the tricuspid valve now. I'm bring it over to here.
Yeah, I don't know if you notice is those two valves were very different from one another. Okay, we'll explain what that means here in just a minute. Okay, so we're gonna bring this up to here. Okay, this is the aortic valve now. Good. Okay. So now, you can lean forward. Okay. So let's see what we got. Jason, you can take your chair back. Okay. And sit down. Okay, so let's preview this. And let me explain what all this stuff means here. So we look at this, first heart sound, second heart sound, love dub, rest, love dub, rest. This is the rest to work ratio right here. This should be two to one. And you can see here that he's got, um, it's not quite two to one, so he's, his, with his, his Mitral valve, he's got a little bit of a rapid heartbeat. This rest period here should be twice as long as that. So that rest period between these beats at two to one, that means that if you live 100 years, your, your heart is rested for 66 of those years. It's pretty interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. So you see this, this line here which represents these rest periods? That should be perfectly flat, should be straight, okay? You can see that there, it's not. It's got a lot of little lumps in there. That's, that's a disorganization of electrical current. So he's got a little bit of a vitamin B4 deficiency, okay? There should not be any of these, these little extra beats here before the first beat. What this means, that's a pre-systolic abnormal heart sound. That means that Jason's probably got some cholesterol and fat buildup around his mitral valve. That's what that's telling me. This is a pretty strong heartbeat. Not, this is, the heartbeats aren't bad, but that's telling me he's got fat and cholesterol buildup. That means that the, the blood is squirting into that, into that, that chamber. And that's why you get this extra heart sound here. So that's the primary thing I'm seeing in his mitral valve. Let's look at his tricuspid valve. Now, does this look normal? It's not, okay? So here we have an extra beat right here. So it's love, an extra beat here, an extra beat here. So now we're actually getting extra beats where there shouldn't be. And then here, he's got a rest period 
Here he's got like an extra beat here, which could actually be um, uh, a closing off or a valve that isn't closing properly. But this rest period is pretty good. So he's, again, he's got some vitamin B4 deficiencies. Now let's look at his aortic valve. This valve is actually a little bit better. So now we've got, uh, the only thing we have here is his aortic valve is not closing properly. You see this little tooth-like structure right there, but it's lub-dub, rest to work ratio, pretty good, two to one. He's got some flutter in there. This valve is not closing quite as well as it should. This rest period's pretty good here. So he does have some rest periods that aren't bad, just that they're all that some of them aren't. Some of them aren't good. Now let's look at the pulmonic valve. Here we got a lot of flutter in here, uh, possibly some extra beats. Now the rest period's pretty good. Um, this valve is not closing well enough. Rest period pretty good here. Um, lots of flutter in here. So what I would do with Jason probably is I would give him um, three products, okay? I would give him number one, Cataplex B. I would give him Cataplex G, which really relaxes the valves of the heart and helps them to close. I would probably give him soybean lecithin to help dissolve the cholesterol buildup around these valves, which I'm seeing right here, okay? Now, you don't see it on everyone. You don't, even, you don't see it on this one, but you definitely see it on those three. So those, I'd give him three products, and then I'd retest him in uh, about three to four weeks. You also had me on uh, organic bound minerals. Yeah, that was to slow your heart down. Oh, okay. And I don't think, I'm not sure that you need that, okay. you know, right now, because these, these are pretty good down here. The rest of the work ratio, not okay. bad there. Yes. Well, what would you tell him what to do with his diet and exercise? Uh, we talked to him about his, I've talked to Jason about his diet. Yeah, Cur currently since May 7th, I've had uh, eggs, uh, salsa, uh, carrots, uh, cottage cheese, a half a cup, and uh, rice and chicken. Uh, now, now if, if you look at, if you look at right here, you look at the size of these second sounds, this one's a little high. This one here, pretty high here. So he may have some adrenal stress here, but sometimes when the, when the second sound is high in the pulmonic valve, they're eating too much sugar, okay? And if, they're, if, if this whole thing is a lot worse than this, then I would, I would question them very, very thoroughly on their diet. Now, I happen to know Jason. I know what he eats. But yeah, I'd ask him, if this were real high, I'd ask him about sugar and carbohydrate. Um, he, uh, you know, the, the fatty buildup around the heart could be uh, trans fats. So we, we could talk about that. Uh, I definitely talk to them about their diet. Yeah. yeah. But we want to give them the nutrition that their heart needs because we're not getting B4 in our diet. We're just not. And so we want to give the, the heart the nutrition that it needs. And if they had like varicose veins or some other issues, we would look at uh, products for that also. But one thing I want to do is one thing I try and do is I, I try and get people on Whole Foods, which you're well aware of. With yeah. um, uh, I try and get them off fast food, bad fats, sugar, processed food, and get them on a whole food diet. Get people it to exercise. Organic. Yeah, organic if possible. Yeah. Grass-fed and grass-finished beef. Yeah, if, if, if we can get that, definitely, yes. But you can, you can get that, absolutely. So that is how I would would analyze this guy, that Jason's heart. Now, you saw how fast that is. You can, you can pick these problems out if you know what you're doing quickly. You don't need to wait a, a week to get your results back. You can get them back immediately. So this is how we look at the heart in the office. This is... Certainly one of the ways. Another way, there's some blood testing that I can do that I evaluate the heart with. But this is the fastest, most efficient way to look at the nutritional needs of somebody's heart that I know of. So, um, God, we're done right on time. <laughs> so, um, 
uh, if, if, you know, most of you know people that have some heart issues that, that might benefit from this. And so uh, what we do is we offer this, uh, is this like $50 for patients? Is that what it is? What do we charge for this? Um, it's individually is $45. $45 for patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we $45 I think for non-patients it's it's higher. Higher. Yeah. Yeah. It's 50. yeah. So $45 for a patient to have this done. Um, uh, we it's a little higher for people who aren't patients and uh, it's quick, it's simple, it's inexpensive and we can like I said find out a lot about what's happening with somebody's heart and their their entire nutrition just from looking at the four valves of the heart. Um, anybody have any questions? Any more questions, Anne? Okay, Harry, any questions? No, I, my heart skips to about ever. <laughs> you know, I got a pacemaker and a deep in. Yeah, so like vitamin, uh, Cataplex B would be a real good product yeah. for you. That would really help nourish your heart with the B4. So I, and I take that myself just as a preventative. I take six a day just to prevent any heart problems. I take that and soybean lecithin are the two heart products that I take regularly myself just, to, just for maintenance. Good. Well, that's all I have. I hope you guys got something out of this. If you have any questions regarding some of the other issues that I talked about, let me know. And uh, great. Thanks for coming tonight. Yeah.